Welcome to the Hunting Dog Public, where we talk about everything hunting dogs and more. I'm your host, Cody Moreland, and let's drop that tailgate. Today's word comes to you from Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. All right, guys, welcome back to the Hunting Dog Public Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Moreland. And as you can tell by the title, we're talking to Mr. Adam O'Donnell today. We talked for over two hours, so we're going to bust these up into two different episodes because a two-hour podcast is a little long for anybody to listen to. Anyways, without further ado, I hope you all enjoy this first hour. Here we go, Mr. Adam O'Donnell. We'll get it going. I'm, 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 I'm clear. In fact, I've been clear for an hour. Well, you said 3 o'clock, and I forgot you're an hour behind me, so I've been sitting here. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm. Sorry about that. That's my I, fault. I, I didn't know yours. I needed to clarify Central Time. No, I, I hadn't even thought of it, and, and then it got to be about three thirty, and I said, you know what? I'll bet he's in the South. <laughs> well, uh, yes, sir. We're in Mississippi. I didn't so, even. Yeah. I that never even crossed my mind. It didn't mind either till because, about a half an hour ago. Because I've actually the bad part is I've been sitting here about twenty minutes because I I told you <laughs> that I was going to wait till three and I said well he's probably trying to get oh, some stuff done right no. before. So that's that's funny. That's I was, all good. <laughs> Man, I I've been sitting here waiting, twiddling my thumbs. That's hilarious. And, and we both we both been doing the same. <laughs> I bet you thought, man, that what a liar. <laughs> no, no, I figured it out. I just thought, you know what? Shame on me. I bet he's an hour behind well, me. So I, when he said three o'clock, it's actually four here. So I, I might be telling on myself, but <laughs> I, you know, I I know you're from Michigan, but I I didn't even look to see what time zone you. <laughs> yeah, or Eastern. Okay, well, yeah, that yep. you know, I guess that makes sense now. But yeah, I- I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Let's <laughs> no, put it like that. no, no, no. I've been looking for it. It gave me a chance to brush over some of my notes and yes, sir. and uh, pick up some dates that I had been looking for. I'm ready. All right, guys, we're here with Mr. Adam O'Donnell. Mr. Adam, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and where you're from? All right, I am uh, from Byron, Michigan, which is. Uh, southern part of michigan uh down in the farm country and uh born and raised here i'm 49 years old uh been around tree dogs almost my whole life uh mostly coon hounds uh probably i think i was 14 years old or maybe even 12 uh went coon hunting with my older brother who brought home a buddy from where he worked and uh he had a coon hound and i begged my mom to to let me go even though it was a school night um we went out and treated a couple coons and i've been hooked ever since so uh it, just basically uh just an old country boy you know uh feel like i ought to be in the south but here i am up in the frozen tundra of michigan <laughs> well so, we'll forgive you for that i know it's not your yeah. choice <laughs> i like it I yes like sir. It. what's the train like in michigan where you hunt uh it varies right here at my house i'm looking across a pretty flat field uh, you could probably drive 20 miles in any direction before you really hit a noticeable hill you know now a lot of our state land that i hunt is unforgiving land that they just didn't want to develop i suppose some of it can get rough and hilly nothing like you know you've you've been to them rotten spots in jamestown tennessee that no one wants to go to nothing like that yes sir. but uh we do have some hills that'll burn your legs you know if you go, <laughs> Michigan is a strange state because in two hours, if I head north, you'll know I'm up north. You know, it's it just changes. A uh-huh. uh, lot, lot more piney, uh, cedars, rolling hills, boggy swamps, porcupines, black bears. You know, you start running into those things. 
three hours north, we can be in real bear country, elk, cougars, uh, all of that. But right here where I live, it's farm country. Coons galore. We've always got squirrels because there's uh, there's an abundance of crops. You know, I mean, we got leftover beans on the ground, corn. So even if we don't have acorns, there's food for the game. And uh, I feel very fortunate to live where I live for that reason. Yes, sir. So so where you are is mostly flat cropland and small patches of timber or yes just- sir yeah we're we're uh my county has uh the shiawassee river running through it fairly large river and so that breaks up the roads they're not necessarily square blocks through the, throughout the county but most of it is i mean we're we're pretty spoiled in that if we cut a dog loose and it gets too deep we can a lot of times just drive around the block like they would in ohio or indiana to get closer you know yes or like a like a section road or something yeah like that. yeah we're 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 square blocks for the most part um some of our roads are angly and curvy that follows the waterways but as a rule right here by my place it's square square blocks i got you how big are those patches of timber Oh, they vary. I've got a patch across the road that I've trained uh, oodles of puppies in. It's probably 20 acres at at the best. I've got a, boy, most of all of my farms are 20, 30, 40 acres of woods. You know, sometimes they're connected by other sections that you don't Mm -hmm. necessarily have permission to to hunt, but they're connected. So a lot of times the dogs will go tree and you just go get them. You know, we have a a retrieve law where we're allowed to go get our dogs on private property. We just can't take the gun over there. So I got you. it's, uh, it's cool. I hear you. Do you hunt while we're on this? Do you hunt mostly public or private or about even? Uh, where I'm at, I cannot get permission, uh, to hunt squirrel with my dogs during deer season for obvious reasons a lot of it's leased or people just deer hunt and they don't want you in there i've got i got about three three private land spots that i can hunt yes. um during like the bow season now gun season we we just don't hunt anywhere because the dog will get shot if if it's you know that's that's a risk you take uh so i don't hunt during the two weeks of of rifle or shotgun season here but I hunt every day and usually um, it's state land throughout the early fall. And then once the deer season is over, uh, our, our deer season ends December 1st. And and then sometimes we've got the muzzleloader season that some landowners are picky about. But once deer season is over, I, that opens up all of my private land. Yes, so. Sir through <laughs> October, November, parts of December, I'm pretty much hunting state land every day. This is another off topic, but when do y'all squirrels normally root? Uh, January. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. good for you. It is. It is good. Our, our, uh, we usually have snow on the ground. And so that's a non-issue for us. We don't, we don't hesitate. We don't bat an eye to go, squirrel hunting i don't care if there's 20 inches of snow the squirrels are rutting uh they breed so we can go tree squirrels on some of the nastiest days you know ain't that the truth that's i went yeah. to arkansas this past year in that umca hunt and it okay. was a sheets of ice and i never I in my wildest dreams thought <laughs> we'd tree squirrels when there we didn't tree many but we yeah. treat a few and i'm like there is no way that that squirrel's laying up there on that sheet of ice at the top of that tree but it was. It was. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a there's a lot of people that don't even bother to hunt in in that terrain or type of of conditions. They just oh, they look outside, they see it's snowing or they see it's icy, and why bother? Because they don't think they're going to tree anything. But when you're living in it, and it's either go or 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 don't have squirrel dogs, um, you go. And you realize mm, we can still have good hunts, you know. We call them fair so, weather hunters. Yeah, 
You well, know? you know, and, and we'll probably get into it, but uh, that that ties in with the whole competition versus pleasure hunter type, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. yes, sir. You know, and I guess it's a little off topic, but people do the same thing with deer here. I mean, the reason I asked about really? y'all's deer season is ours pretty much overlaps the entire deer season, except for our squirrel season goes through into February and our deer season ends at the end of January. <laughs> so if, if you want to squirrel hunt, you have to hunt and it's about rifle yeah. season from November on. So, well, many of your listeners will probably um, relate to this, but the first time I, it dawned on me that we were going to Jamestown, Tennessee to compete in the world hunt and it was gun season. I about stroked you know I, i'm just like about had a heart attack like why in the world would anybody schedule a major event like this in the middle of, of deer season but mm -hmm. it's different down there they've got such a big season that i don't think it really even bothers people if up here you wouldn't even consider hunting during those two weeks of gun season if i had a dollar for every one of my buddies that said man I've got us a spot to go in January. And I'm like, the squirrels are rutting in the middle of December here. You know, mm -hmm. I, they're dinned up in end of January into February. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, but that's obviously our rut here comes in right. around the end of December, 1st of January. So nobody's like, no, you don't need to be over here. So it's more or less public for us also. But mm -hmm. that January rut and deer season not being in would be magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. Our deer season is awful. Um, it's, it, we have a youth season in a, like a, I don't know, maybe like a military veterans type season in September. And then we have a uh, bow season opens October 1st and runs right through until November 14th. And then from November 15th to December 1st, is our gun season. And then we have two weeks of muzzle loader and another month of bow season that doesn't really end until January one. And in certain areas, if they have CWD or whatever going on, they may even extend the, the, the bow season into middle of January. So it's stupid. I mean, I've often thought it wouldn't hurt my feelings if a lot of the deer just die off, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I understand that side of it. I mean, I, I really enjoy deer hunting, which we hunt with deer dogs also. So, Oh gosh. Yeah. We enjoy running them Walker dogs and them wild wow. dogs. And yeah. it's, it's a lot of thrill. I guess I grew up doing that. I remember doing that with my dad, you know, that's, I guess that would be huh. how I started hunting with a hunting dog is we run deer and we still do wow. here. So, well, I've run some deer and it's, it's, it's exciting, but it I've ain't never done kind it on purpose. It ain't just, <laughs> no. you, didn't, you didn't get to shoot them at the end of the road. No, <laughs> I shouldn't say road at the end of the field. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, let's uh, transition. I enjoyed that, but let's transition into um, when you, you said you started off coon hunting. Yes. So when you transitioned to your cur dogs, was you transitioning for coon hunting or was you transitioning specifically for squirrel hunting? Mm, yeah, I was purposely uh, shifting gears at that point in my life to squirrel dogs. Uh, basically, I can't do anything in moderation. Okay. So <laughs> I'm with you 100%. My, my poor wife uh, basically raised four children by herself because I was off coon hunting five nights a week, three, four nights a week, just to be ready for a hunt somewhere on a Friday or Saturday night. And it boiled down to, you know, I had a lot of fun. I made a lot of grand night champions and, and you know, enjoyed the coon hound world, but it was going to cost me my marriage. It's definitely tough on a family life. Yes, absolutely. And so I had to give it up, just walk away. My best friend and partner in dogs um, died of a heart attack suddenly. And it was just a really good place for me to have an exodus, you know? So I got out and I was going stir crazy. Got into beagles for a brief period of time just to have something to do. You know, mm -hmm. but 
that went from having a beagle to go out and run run a rabbit with the kids turned into having 12 beagles and hitting field trials every weekend and that was going to get me divorced you know so <laughs> yeah I, under, I understand uh, i'm exactly that, the same i'm wide yeah. open or none <laughs> uh, beyond that you know as well as i do there's something about a tree dog that a man just can't get away from and uh preach it yeah yeah so I, I i give up the beagles and and i sought after a coon dog that would basically give me some opportunity to to have a dog that i could go do something with i had been around curs all my life so i, I what i was looking for though was something different because the curs that i had been around were Zeke Varachek's strain, and um, maybe some of you know that name, but he's a good friend of mine, passed away here a few years ago, but uh, he had these cur dogs that were really NKC, Steffens mixed with whatever. They were squirrel dogs, but, you know, I couldn't reach in the box and grab one. You'd, you'd pull out a nub, you know, they were just yes, not that way. They'd bite you. That's uh, uh, people mean. Oh, yeah, okay. they were, yeah, they were just, yeah. uh, people mean, and I thought all cur dogs were that way. Um, so when I was searching for something to scratch this horrible itch, I had to have a dog in my life. Um, I began to research lines of, of curs that weren't mean. And, uh, I, I kind of settled on Alan Franklin's line, but I was, I was determined to have a combo dog mm -hmm. because I, I liked coon hunting and, and I liked the idea of having a squirrel dog. So that's sort of where I fell was, was in that line. And I had, of course, you remember the squirrel haters and, and, uh, the old squirrel dog central days. Um, so yes, that's where I did my research. That's still around and, actually. Well, squirrel dog central is, but oh, squirrel haters yes, is not. Yes. Sir. I, I, I didn't much care for squirrel dog central. I was more of a rebel type got along with the guys <laughs> on, on squirrel haters <laughs> well you know while we're talking about that <laughs> i absolutely hate how well, I hate's a strong word i very strongly dislike the facebook the facebook platform as in being liberal and trying to take our rights away sure but man do they have it right with the forms and the how easy it is to use and the pictures and squirrel dog central. And I'm not trying to knock them, but it's just a, a old form. Right. And I right. love the accessibility of Facebook. Well, and I don't want to get off topic, but I'll tell yes, you, sir. Facebook has been a wonderful tool for people who are computer savvy enough to use it properly. Yes, sir. Getting, well, for example, getting puppies in the hands of someone, and I'm going to throw a name out there, Terry Shear. Mm -hmm. He's not he's not um, physically able to go to the hunts like you or I might, mm -hmm. but he's posting videos, he's posting, uh, you know, pictures, and he's on there. He's he's he enjoys it. It's uh, it's part of what he does. So, getting a puppy in the hands of someone like a Terry Shear who will promote them on facebook puts puts that puppy in the public eye it'll put a dog on the map yes it will mm -hmm. and that's what exactly what happened with like action jackson he raised him he's he's a dog man he he can make dogs do crazy things you know <laughs> yes, um so that i learned a long time ago if you are careful who you place puppies with you can do yourself a major favor by putting him in the right hands. And it doesn't necessarily mean competition hunter either. Yes, sir. Okay. So Facebook has been wonderful for that purpose, but it also has a dark side that, that we all hate. Oh, yes, you know. sir. All right. You said that you were looking for a combo dog and you, one of the questions I was going to ask you is, is, was you just looking for any cur dog or a breeder or? The answer to that is, I basically, like a lot of other people, fell in love with uh, a brindle cur. Okay, so that sort of narrowed the field. And I, I really wanted a brindle cur. I didn't so much know about the breeds. I knew I wanted something with Apache in it or 
Franklin's Thunder, you know. I actually, crazy story, I had sent a check to Brian Looney for payment in full on a puppy that would have been Hummer's litter mate. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <laughs> uh, it got down to, you know, scheduling a time to go get the puppy. And he called me and said, man, I have terrible news. Uh, I, we just came home and the whole litter's dead, but I think two or three pups hid in the doghouse. There's a dog pound up the road and he believes that someone just dropped a dog off and it showed up at his yard and, you know, maybe got in their food dish and the pups came around and he, whatever happened, a stray dog killed that litter, except for Hummer and I think a female and maybe one other pup. Wow. And he called me and said, dude, I'm sorry, but your, your pup is dead. So he said, I, I'll save you a, a spot on the next cross or I'll send you your money back. Well, I had to have a pup. I, I was sick of waiting. So I ended up getting my money back and uh, found a guy by the name of Danny Hamilton in West Virginia that had a litter. And I called him about the mail while well, he was keeping the mail. So I ended up settling for a yellow female. And I didn't want yellow, but I couldn't wait any longer. So I got this female. He had a buddy basically was coming this way. He hauled it to Southern Michigan and I met him and long story. That's the first female I had, uh, first cur dog that I had. Yes. That was, uh, the Libby female. I'm sure now you don't mind a yellow dog. I still prefer a brindle man. I, I prefer a brindle. If if you got my kennel right now, I do not have a yellow dog on the place. Wow. Um, I don't hate them. I don't mind them. I've had some, but typically if I have my choice, I'm picking a yellow. I'm picking a brindle rather. So, I got you. <laughs> so that gives you Libby and I've looked at her pedigree a little bit. She's out of Thunder Sport. And... Yeah, she was out of Thunder Sport. Her mama was uh was out of Streaks Ben, which was a horribly inbred streak dog. I mean, he was bred. Ben was out of streak, bred to a daughter of streak that was out of a streak bitch. I mean, there was streak, 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 bam, bam, bam. Bred to a daughter, bred to a daughter out of that cross, and you get Streaks Ben, which I've been told was an amazing coon dog. Just one of the one of the best of his era. Hmm. And then they bred him to an inbred Kemmer dog, which was double Jake and Lou. So you got, which I'm not a fan of inbreeding. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of line breeding, but it seems like when the stars align, even though those dogs sometimes are half retarded, they produce. They say they freaks. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened with her. Basically, she was Danny's house dog. I don't even know if he squirrel hunted her much. I was told she would tree, but she produced Libby. And also several other good ones. Uh, Ryan Clancy had one he called uh, Lucy that that uh, was a real good squirrel dog. So, hmm. yeah. so Thundersport was on the top side, and she's pretty close to streak on both sides. One, oh, yeah. one generation, well, one side. I think the bottom was three generations out and the top side was four generations out. Well, let's see. Libby was out of Gracie Slick and Gracie Slick was out of Streak's Ben. Of course, he was out of Streak. Uh, I explained all that Streak business. That was all she had on that bottom side. But on the top, you know, Thundersport, of course, was was out of uh, Franklin's Thunder. And that goes out out of uh, Smith Street Jr. and then Smith Street. Yeah, Street Jr. So I guess my question about this whole thing is, is for some reason, which you might not want to touch on it, my dog's out of streak also on down the lineage. Why is that dog so controversial? And if it is, why did so many people breed to that dog? Uh, Personally, uh, as far as controversial, I'm pretty positive he was not from omcba stock Mm -hmm. and i don't i don't i don't mind to say that because it's pretty well known i'm not the first one to say something like that all these are opinions 
Yes, of course. We, we, there's no proof. There's no, and honestly, per, personally, I, I could care less. Yes, that was before my time. And a lot of these dogs that are mixed up are before my time. I can't do anything about it. Neither can you. I agree. Um, uh, but I will say this, that sucker reproduced. Well, that song on, if you look at a set of papers in the seven year lineage, if there's not a streak in there, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's odd. Yeah. Well, I think whatever that was, whether it was a little hustle that uh, come from a feist, I have no idea, nor do I care. And, um, I, I just believe that he had the right mixture of something and uh, it benefited the breed. I wish you know? they had a video camera back in because it must have been some kind of dog for everybody <laughs> and their brother to want to hunt, to breed to it. Yeah, for sure. I uh, wasn't around then. Uh, like I said, I was focused on coon hounds yes. at that point in my life. Yes, sir. Let's skip on to how did you decide to breed Libby to the Fred dog? That ended up being Porcupine Mountain Buds. All right. There's a little backdrop on that story. Um, I bred Libby to Apache. And I got that litter and I had one that I called Apache Woman. Kennel name was Lady. I had Lady doing good at six, seven months old. And I actually sold Libby because the pup was doing well and I needed some money. My daughter blew up the motor in my car or my truck. And so I sold Libby and, uh, fixed the truck, blah, 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 long story. But I went year, a couple years later, uh, I wanted to breed Apache woman to tree knock an ammo world champion coon dog, you know? Mm-hmm. And so long story short, I found out that Ammo had a full litter mate brother, or maybe an older brother from the same cross, right over here in West Michigan at Al Inglesman's house. Yeah. Al had tree knocking Cyrus. So in my thinking, I'm like, why would I drive, you know, 10 hours to Matt Hall's house to breed to Ammo if I can drive two hours across the state to breed to his brother? Makes sense. Yeah. So I ended up calling Al and drove over there and, and bred to, uh, to Cyrus. But the funny thing was I pull in Al's driveway and I'm looking at this dog in the kennel and I'm like, my God, I swear that's Libby. Like a deer in headlights. Yeah. Come to find out uh, Al comes out grinning cause he knew I'd recognize her. He hadn't told anybody he'd bought her from Jeff Hoke. And he is the one that bred her to Fred. He owned Fred and not to prolong the story, but when I first started to do my homework on breeding Libby, I called Alan Franklin and said, Hey, who do you think I should breed her to? And he, he mentioned Bobtail Fred. Well, I thought that's a stupid name. I ain't, I ain't breeding to nothing. <laughs> no dog named oh. Fred. What a retarded name. Ain't that funny how that works? <laughs> a dog so can be up, ugly. It don't matter yeah. how good it trees. Oh, uh-uh. yeah. So anyway, uh, it, it was meant to be because Al had bought her. Libby was a WTDA dog of the year. Don't ask me what year. I don't remember, but She'd won the worth the the youth world hunt, made squirrel champion, night champion, tree champion, bench champion, whatever. When Jeff Hoke Ho- had her, she was doing it. Yeah, she was a squirrel dog. So uh, anyway, I'm I'm looking at this dog and and I'm freaking out because I know that's my old Libby dog and I don't know why she's in Michigan, you know. So Al comes out chuckling. He said, "Yeah, I bought her." And, uh, in fact, I just weaned, weaned a litter of pups, and I'm like, no way, you're kidding me. So uh, he's showing me these four puppies, and I said, Al, <laughs> I got to have that brindle. He's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm raising these two for myself. So I finally talked him into letting me partner with him on the little brindle male. And uh-huh. the, three, the three females were all yellow. So he let me take that pup home 
and I, I said, I'll do all the work. I'll do all the running. I'll, I'll train him. You can own half of him, but I want that male. And, and I left my lady dog there to be bred to Cyrus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Cyrus, we didn't know at the time was sterile. And two months later, I got no puppies and I've paid him the stud fee. And, and he said, well, that's weird. I bred her three times. She should be having pups. Well, he didn't have no puppies. And, and he said, listen, rather than me send you money, your money back for the stud fee, why don't you just keep that, that male pup? I'd had him long enough where he was out of sight, out of mind. He didn't know how good he was doing. Nah, he, well, I didn't know at the time he has, we're only talking Oh, a couple you know, months. Two months. Uh, he he was f four. He was four months old. Yeah, he was just being a baby. But uh, a month later, he was training squirrels. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just worked out where I ended up getting full ownership of him, and he kept the stud fee. That was you know we just agreed to forget about it. So he sent me the papers and and. Uh, I, I didn't know what to call this pup. You know, I, I hadn't had, uh, any kennel name and, and I had raised Libby and had raised Apache woman, but I felt like those were just generic names, you know? So I'm, I was wrecking my brain of what, what, what can I name a pup that will have some, something to do with a mountain? Well, we're in Michigan. We don't have a lot of mountain ranges, but in the UP, there are several, there's iron mountain. And there's the porcupine mountains. I thought, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I'll just go with porcupine mountain. In my my boy had started calling him Buddy, so I called him Porcupine Mountain Bud. That's where all that started. So, so, uh, so, so let know. me get this story straight. Your first ever cur dog, you ended up selling. Somehow, getting back, in my opinion, your biggest ever reproducing male dog out of her from a cross that you didn't even know was made. No. And you looked up right. on, on the pup. Yep. Yep. And my, my best friend, Scott Freesharger, he's someone I'm, I moved in with him right out of high school, him and his wife. And, uh, we coon hunted together. Uh, he retired and kind of wanted to shift gears and scale back like a lot of coon hunters do and, and, and get into a squirrel dog he'd hunted with bud and wanted one really bad well ron woodward a uh, buddy of mine that lives here in michigan had raised one of the females and her name was annie well scott bought annie he just had to have one so we ended up with two out of that cross the first one that ever started was a female that went to indiana um, she treed the first squirrel. I seen a video of her tree and I think four and a half, five months old. And she ended up getting hit in the road like a month or two later running a deer. You know? So that female was out of the equation. Uh, Al had raised Abby and uh, ended up selling her to a guy here in Michigan, Ed Baldwin. Ed had her treeing squirrels. He was hunting her and then he sold her. I, I forget who ended up with her, but she ended up with uh, my buddy Jeff. Anyway, sounds like a produced, pretty good cross. Yeah, she's she's produced some outstanding dogs. Uh, the, they bred her to Blackjack, and and uh, there was a male out of that cross that's that ended up down in Southern Indiana that's done real well reproducing. So it that it, it's just good blood, you know. Yes, sir. So to this point, we have Porcupine Mountain Bud. And i am just looked up some information. It looks like he has sired what I have found to be five world champions and two reserve world champions, a uh, couple of dogs of the year, along with several other champion stuff. There are multiple state champions. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you, you know, how many state champions there were and on the world champions um that was for four different dogs oh yeah 
yeah, Naylor was the first world champion out of Bud. And oddly enough, <laughs> those guys, uh, Robert Bigger and Clarence Smith, they went to Jamestown and put him as a junior dog. They put him in the senior hunt. And I said, why don't you just hunt him in the junior hunt? He's a junior. Well, they said, we, we drove all this way. We're going to, we're going to play in the big show. You hunt, know. But did they hunt both or just the, no, the, they won't let you No, They won't let you oh, do well. that. UMCA. They will. Yeah. They put, um, I think he was uh, 17 or 18 months old at the time. Uh, they put him in the senior hunt and ended up winning the OMCBA uh, 2019 senior hunt with a junior dog, you know, and that was, uh, that was remarkable. Yes, now sir. that dog was out of bud and Tiger Creek Pip, which was out of Hummer. Yes, sir. Which is also Porcupine Mountain Bend's cross well that's that's what i was leading up to is uh the next dog to win a world hunt was ben and uh, he won the 2019 nsd junior world hunt and then the following year he won the 2020 well he didn't win he was the reserve world champion uh omcba in 2020 yes sir so uh those two were brothers what happened to the nailer though nailer uh died he uh he fell out of a tree coon hunting and immediately started having seizures. Now that was before he won the world hunt. He was having seizures all along. I mean, he had a seizure at the world hunt mm. and, and, and beyond that, he was on three legs at the final cast. He'd gotten hurt. He'd tough little bugger. Dang. Um, yeah, but the seizures got worse and worse. And, and, and one night, uh, he just had one and he never came out of it. They ended up carrying him to the vet and they were just, they just put him down. So it was sad. He fell out of the tree though. Yeah. He fell, he fell like 20 feet out of a tree and cracked his skull. Boy, that scares me. Mine's bad about climbing too. Only in a tree. Yeah. That scares me. It does me too. I had a walker dog fall out of a tree and break its neck and I carried it to the truck. It was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. Hmm. But, uh, Anyway, so he seems to pass on pretty good traits to say the least. Yeah, bred to bred to the right female. You know, I've had some crosses on Bud that that w made squirrel dogs, but they wouldn't know. You know, they're just squirrel dogs. They weren't no prodigies. They weren't no amazing. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to yes, say. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it seems like the the Hummer bitches. The hard tree and Hummer bitches seem to click the best. Well, I was going to ask, is it a certain bloodline that he crosses well with or certain traits? Hummer, uh, I'm, I'm hoping Festus. I, we don't know yet. I've never bred a Festus bitch, but they're brothers. So you know how that works. They ought to be good. He has crossed well on Jukebox. He's crossed well on uh, Blackjack. Just been a bunch of of Apache and Hummer dogs that, that made real good dogs. I had Apache woman here and, um, how this all started. I hauled her back to Al Inglesman to breed her to Fred. Uh, well, I tried to because the bud pup was doing yeah. so well. Oh yeah. I thought, man, uh, she's out of Libby. That ought to cross well. So I had set it up for when she came in heat to go breed her. Well, Fred died before she, uh, a month before she came in heat. Well, wow, that's tough. Yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So now what do I do? So I went ahead and uh, bred her to the pup I had. I mean, he was just over a year old. I didn't want to do it, but I, I just bred her one time. As soon as the, they unhooked, you know, I, uh, I took him hunting, got his mind off of it, put him, put him away and it didn't seem to bother him at all. And now I don't make a habit of that, yes, but, sir. um, I did do it then because I wanted to raise another litter out of her and that was her half brother. And I'm a big fan of half brother, half sister crosses. So I went ahead and did it. And that produced really well. We ended up making that cross three times. 
Is there certain traits that Bud seems to pass on to all his pups? Well, they don't all get it, but he's a he's a hustler, and a lot of his pups have a lot of a lot of hunt. Um, some of them don't have it up front; they develop it. Actually, I had a little a little jip here out of Bud and a, a an Apache daughter, and that was the hardest treeing little female I had ever had on the place. But that bitch wouldn't go 50 yards. She would go out there and and stop and look back at you as if to say, are you coming? And if you didn't step in her direction, she was coming back. Yeah, that's and, uh, aggravating. <laughs> it was. And I sold her to uh, to a fellow that was looking for something that would hunt close. Uh, now, I got her to where she would go 200 yards, you know. But now, today, you know, that jip will go 600, 700 yards through the country and nothing flat uh, she just had to build that confidence with age so yes sir but overall the the traits there they're there are are hustle you know they, they seem to be tree dogs tree minded but i don't attribute all of that to bud you know I, I, i've had some real success with uh, like i said hummer females all of the world champions out of bud are out of Hummer bitches. Well, I mean, that's pretty remarkable in itself. Well, that's what Mr. Allen said that the thunder always passed down was hustle. Yeah. They'd, they'd go well, get treed somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know that that isn't where Bud got it from was the thunder sport, you know? Yes, sir. Um, I think Bud particularly is a, a, a good diverse mix of his, his parentage, you know, there's something to be said about a little camera blood in there. It puts a little nose on him. Mm -hmm. He seems to have a better nose than a lot of these curves. Um, I think that probably comes from the camera line. Don't know, but I'm speculating. Yes, sir. You know, but, um, yeah, there's, uh, it just seems to be that, uh, good Hummer bitches cross to the degree of, you can expect a couple prodigies. That's what I'm looking for. I'm a cherry picker. You know, I'm looking for that five-year-old that plays the piano by ear, you know. Hey, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know sir. what I mean? The natural born early starter. Yes. Yes. So, and that crossed so well, uh, we learned with, with Bud that we actually bred Bud's sister to uh, to Hummer and – um I'll be honest, the females out of that cross, there were no prodigies. There were a couple real good squirrel dogs, but the males, uh, we ended up with Action Jackson and uh, the image dog that Greg Maynard had. That that was out of what cross? That was out of Bud's sister, Annie, and Hummer. Oh, out of the same, the Fred and the Libby. Oh, Yeah. Wow, yeah. I did I did not know that. That's yeah, yeah. There was two wow. prodigies in that litter, and, for sure. Uh, out of that litter, yeah, yep. So we uh, we've had some success. Those two dogs were born right here. Of course, now you know Nailer and and Ben. There's there's several others out of that cross that are. As good as them, but don't have the world titles. The deuce dog that Junior Maynard has, uh, he's cut from the same cloth. I swear, he's he's a yellow dog, but he he's just like his brother Ben. You know, just big big motor, hard tree dog, just almost identical. You know. Well, that kind of changes up my next question because I did not know about that cross. I was gonna ask what you thought was the better cross between Bud and Pip. And Bud and Lost Bottoms Grace, but now I guess we got a different cross that we can throw in there. Which one do you think was more successful? Out of those two crosses? Well, I guess out of the three crosses now, because out of Porcupine Mountain Bud you, and the Pip Dog, you had Naylor and Ben. And well, here's, yeah, yeah. Out of the Porcupine Mountain Bud Dog and Lost Bottoms Grace, you've got Murdered Out and Spike. Spike. And, and my grace bitch. Yeah. So I guess yeah. out of the three crosses, which one, in your opinion, I, if you could, you might not be able to say. 
I didn't even know no, about the X and Jackson one. Yeah, the Action Jackson and Image Cross, um, there were three out of that cross that I really liked. The third one is a female called um, Porcupine Mountain Twister. And I gave her to my buddy Daniel Dobson here in Michigan for half price in the event that he'd let me breed to her in the future. And then once I got it to breed to my choice of male, I'd give him the papers. So we did that. So Twister uh, started a little bit later, but she is the real deal. She, she's a big, big hustling female, uh, good, solid, accurate little tree dog. Um, not a blow down classy tree dog, yes, but sir. just a, just a real squirrel dog. Now, uh, we raised or we bought back a female that she just didn't have the tree power we were looking for. I gave her to a buddy of mine. He killed a truckload of squirrels with her, but um, she got killed in the road. Don't know how or why, but she, she's dead. <laughs> Uh, I yep. had started several others that they, they just weren't any, there were one female for sure. I know that was a call. She didn't make nothing. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't consider that cross to be one of the better crosses that we've made. Uh, not, not, not dinging Jackson or image in any way, shape or form. I'm sure both of them will be reproducers as well, but the females as a whole were a disappointment to us. Just being honest, we're, we're cutting hairs, but I mean, most people, if they had that cross, they, you know what I mean? And that's pretty outstanding that you've had crosses that you thought were better is where I'm going oh, yeah. with that. Most people, yeah. if they had them two dogs or three dogs out of a, one litter, mm -hmm. I well, mean, sadly, I told my partner, I said, I, I'm not interested in making that cross again because of the females. Uh, I just was looking for higher end. I'm, I'm spoiled that way. I'm, I'm looking for more. Uh, There's always can be better. Yeah. Balance. <laughs> and, and honestly, we have bred Annie to several other males and there just was no comparison to the Hummer cross. It actually went downhill from there. You know, uh, we bred her to Festus Hummer's brother, and we only got one pup that, I consider to be outstanding. And that's the little flow dog that Ken Grice bought from me. I watched it go this past weekend. Okay. She won yeah. the NSD hunt we hosted. Yes, she did. Yes, mm -hmm. she did. She's a nice. Now you want to talk about a motor? Yes, uh, uh, she hustles. She, she treed she, uh, she has... in two rounds. She treed five squirrels. We put her eyes on. And that's pretty good for, well, it was, <laughs> it was uh, May the, I can't remember, May the 14th in Mississippi. Our leaves has been on for <laughs> a month or two. I mean, it's right, green. Right. Well, they're, you know, they say if they're there, you can usually find them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Well, it's amazing what a man I do for a squirrel to look at one, you know, we out there yeah. jerking and beating and banging. And, and besides that, Ken Grice can find a freaking squirrel like nobody's business. I swear that man is a. Uh, He's a magician at finding squirrels. Yes, sir. The best I've ever met. So, so <laughs> as I was saying, though, I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, but you. That ahead. cross, that cross did not produce. We, we called two males out of that cross. I mean, it just was like, dang, here we thought we had a dead ringer and it just didn't work out. So uh, we bred her to my Ben dog. You know, Uncle Niece Cross is usually mm -hmm. pretty good. And I was not happy with that litter. So. Well, you're figuring out what you don't like. Yeah. Well, and I'm hard. I'm hard on them. I, I'm, I'm critical. I'm a, I'm a horrible person to please. And I know what I like. And I'm, I, I just don't have a whole lot of room for, you know, even the little flow dog, as much as I love her, she's not the tree dog I'm looking for, which is why she got sold. Yes, sir. You know. So uh, I got you. Yeah. Well, this is a little off topic. At what age do you normally start considering breeding dogs? Like two years old, three year old, four year old? I will breed a dog uh, when I feel it's physically able. In other words, 
I won't, I won't breed a female on the first heat cycle. Won't do it. But I think that it benefits them to breed on the second. Okay. I'll give you an example. When I had Libby, I wanted to breed her on her second cycle because she was just a tick immature. Like I knew she could be better. And I know it doesn't always work. And there's people that argue against it, but it totally made her mature. Like all of a sudden she was like, okay, it's time to be a big girl. I got to feed these puppies. Get you know? out of that puppy stage. <laughs> yeah. It, it, she would go get treed and she'd stay and she'd go deeper. Or just, it just brought her to full maturity. Okay. I've got a female here that needs a little bit of that. And she's doing heat anytime now. She's not quite two yet, but. I'm looking forward to breeding her for that very same reason, hoping that it'll help her bring her, bring her to full maturity. With that said, a male dog is different. Uh, and every male dog is different as an individual. There are male dogs I've had here that I wouldn't even consider breeding because you can already tell they're little horn dogs and, and breeding them would <laughs> totally rot their brain. You know? Yes, sir. There are dogs like Ben that they have this mentality about them. They shoot out of the box. They're pulling on the lead. Just turn me loose, turn me loose, turn me loose. Those are the types that you can typically get away with breeding young because all they want to do is go to the woods. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I just bred my ice female to Lost Bottoms Ace. Well, <clears throat> I saw, I raised Ace. Uh, and I'm not, I don't say that braggingly, but I raised him here. He won his first hunt when he was nine months old. He was putting the big dogs out of hunts. He would, he would give any dog a run for their money on any given day as a puppy. And mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I sold him <laughs> and regretted it ever since, but I sold him because, first of all, the money got, to where, okay, I, 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 I need to sell him. I can't, you know, I can't turn that down type deal. Yes. Um, but I will say this. I also sold the Ben dog later. And had I known I was going to sell Ben, Ace would still be here. You know, that, that whole thing just sort of blew up in my face where I wished I had kept Ace, but I didn't know I was going to sell Ben. And so I always regretted selling Ace, but I hunted with him a few times. And he's got that very same mentality that I'm looking for in a male dog, which is <clears throat> you're just a ride to the woods. He, he don't care about you. Just turn me loose. He comes out of the box firing. He goes hard. He's got no reverse. He's a freaking stay put tree dog. He's accurate. He's got everything I'm looking for. And I talked to the Lost Bottoms crew into letting me breed to him, but. They said, and I don't blame them, we won't breed him live. Yes, sir. But we, but we will, uh, you get your female down here, we will pay the expenses to breed him artificially if you'll, you know, let us have a puppy or two. And I said, I'll split the litter 50-50 with you because I know, first of all, you guys will do whatever I send down there. You'll do it right, and you'll promote them, and you'll help me. And so I'm fine with that. I'm all about placing puppies with the right people. Yeah. Um, I'm not in this for the money. Uh, you know, I give more pups away than I sell. So they took her and had her artificially bred. I think she took. I don't think she's going to have a big litter. She's due on the 25th. But with all that said, he's just, uh, I don't even think he's two yet. Uh, but they did it artificially. Uh, he might be two. But I know he's young. I know he's young. So uh, I, I watched Ace go. Bart's got a heck of a dog. That that son uh, yes. went. A, I want to say he was a thousand yards. And there ain't no way in my in this world I'd have believed I'd have heard that dog bark. Bart said, "You hear he that dog?" It. And I said, "Yes." <laughs> and he said, "We're gonna call him Tree." And I said, "Okay." I said, "How far is it?" He said, "A thousand yards." And I said, "Ain't no way." He showed me his Garmin. Yes, sir. He's got a horn on him. I mean, he was there when we got there, too. Now, let me tell you about Ace, uh, his breeding. Ace is 
double Hummer, double Bobtail Fred. He is, uh, he's out of Ben, which is out of Bud and a Hummer bitch, which you know is Pip. Yes, sir. Okay. Bred to Porcupine Mountain Twister, which is out of Hummer and Bud's sister, Annie. So he's, he's first cousins cross and he is, he is the only original mountain cur in NSD. That's a third generation litter DNA registered. You know, if you look at his DNA, his NSD papers, it shows Bud, Pip, Ben, you know, three dogs on top, three dogs on bottom. And so, <laughs> but you're double, you're double Hummer and double Bobtail Fred. So this, the, the, what I'm trying to get at is that sucker is bound to reproduce, you know. And he's a good looking animal too. Ain't he though? Man, yeah. that son gun's built like I like him. He, uh, he has changed. Uh, when I had him up here, uh, I could, I could hunt him in a 40 acre patch of woods and he'd make five trees. But the way I hunt is so different than everybody else. Seems like they, they learn to gamble. They learn to, uh, take what they get when they come to it. And down South, it seems like you guys, the way you guys hunt, they get to where they know they can ambush a squirrel. So they don't treat the cold ones. Yes, sir. Mine's terrible about it. it and I noticed Ace, uh, it got him in trouble in the, uh, the world hunt because it, the weather turned to crap. The squirrel stopped moving. And the next thing you know, he's out of pocket, you know, mm-hmm. which I love him to go, but there's, there's a point where you got to slow gear down and start making some dentries. Um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Ace had that when he was a baby, but, um, you know, being in the South, I get it. I get it. They, they, they just, they don't function that way. You they know? like to run wide open with a head in the air Yep. until yep. they hit one. Yep. Mine looked like a competition coon dog. You'd swear there was a, do- a coon dog on that, in that Garmin watching him straight line <laughs> yeah. numbers jumping. I'm like, goodness gracious. <laughs> you got to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Go left. Yeah. What's over here to the left at 50 or 150? <laughs> I don't need you at 600 uh, to the right. That's funny. <laughs> oh, but wow. They, they do it. And, you know, I, we've a lot of coon hunters or people that I talk to that, you know, they get the, let's see how I can say this. They, they think these squirrel dogs are hunt close, don't get out of your sight. Grandpa's old coon, old squirrel dog. And, yeah. you know, I tell them, I was like, look, some might be, but I can show yep. you one that's not. Yep. That's right. Well, and that, that leads me to the whole pleasure dog versus competition dog. I mean, there are competition hunters that won't have a dog that won't get out of your sight for obvious reasons. I, I you know? absolutely cannot stand it. I can't either. I don't want to look at one. Now, I love a dog that cuts the woods up good. Uh, I don't care if you tree behind other dogs all day long, as long as you got squirrel. You know, you don't have to be a thousand yards, but if that's what it takes, that's where you better be. Yes, sir. Because if there's no squirrels between here and a thousand yards, you're going a thousand yards anyways, even if I have to walk you over to that squirrel. I just soon you go get treed and I'll come to you. Uh, Well, I... I've had that discussion with my buddies that, you know, why has he got to go 450 yards? I said, well, do you want him, us to get up before daylight and be out here at daylight? And then him wander around out here for a hundred yards and be like, yep, there ain't no squirrels moving. Let's go home. Right. And you and I both know there are what I call pleasure dogs that will make a loop. And if there ain't nothing stirring, they'll come back and stand around. Like, what are we doing here? There's nothing out here. Let's go somewhere else. They'll stand up for 80 yards that. and look at you. If you don't yeah, move. I will not have it. Nope. Not for me. <laughs> uh, not for me either. Yeah. And I condition dogs on purpose to not be that way. You know, I hunt almost exclusively midday where I don't care where I'm at. My job takes me all over Michigan, but I work for myself. I might go two hours one direction and fix a couple windows and then i'm 
free for the rest of the day. But by the time I find a piece of state land to hunt on, why well, it's 11, 1130. And I might hunt till two or two thirty and then head home, you know, or head to another job. And that's my daily routine all year. Not so much in the summer, but you know, from squirrel season on, they're getting a steady diet of midday, uh, which in Michigan is different. Granted, we we tree squirrels all day long, but not like you know, crack of dawn when every squirrel in the in the in the world is moving. A lot of them are laid up. A lot of them have, you know, the scenting's different. They're sent all over, and they got to pick through that and sort through that, you know. But I, I attribute a lot of my success to the to the style of hunting that I do. The midday rounds make winners. Oh yeah, I know if they get a steady diet of midday, and then I drive to uh, Kentucky and draw out in the morning, and squirrels are stirring. Why, you know, they've had a, a steady diet of the squirrel desert and all of a sudden you put them in the utopia, they look like a million bucks. Well, <laughs> I, I like to agree with that, but I have one spot. My buddy's got squirrel nests in every tree and my dog runs around circles. And I don't know if it's because he's normally hunted in thin squirrels or thin earth squirrels. And he goes over there and there's so many because they don't get touched very often. Yeah. Man, that young one don't know what's going on. He's like, ah, I like his tree. No, he's over here. And I don't, and you look up and he's nesting every one of them. Yeah. So, well, and I will confess, uh, I have gone to places mostly in the South where there's just stupid squirrels. Uh, the population is ridiculous. You know, you come back home and your dogs look retarded for a couple of days because they think there's a squirrel every 50 yards and there's not, you know. You kind of got to, it's it's no different with a beagle. You, you you go up north and run snowshoe hare yes, sir. where them rabbits are jumping every eight feet and, and the <laughs> dogs can just scream and pick their head up and fly. And then you bring them back home and they try to grub up a cottontail. They look stupid for about a week. It's, yeah. it's similar to that equation with these squirrel dogs. When you go down south and you just tree them like, <laughs> like they're everywhere. And then you come home and they act weird for a little while you know yes so i i get it i get it but my point is if i take any one of my dogs uh, as a general rule any of the places that you're going to guide to a hunt they might go seven for seven or or six for six and a couple dens you know they they just typically look really good but then you take them out in the midday round when they got to go make some den trees they can do that because that's what they're used to. That's my Achilles heel. I can't get past that second round because mine doesn't want a tree. Now, if he trees, mm. you just about plus him up. But Well, yes, and, and I know that that is southern dog. I don't want to call it a curse, but but you guys are plagued with that. And, and part of that is your squirrels. We don't have squirrels like your squirrels. Yes, sir. Even our gray squirrels move all day long the the rainy the the snowy days that the, they just move our gray squirrels don't timber like your gray squirrels i've been down south where you're walking in and psh, there he goes oh yeah you know i hate that that's the worst thing our public land gets hunted so hard if you're not there within just a matter of a minute or two they're in a <laughs> hole i mean i hate that and then you're yeah. like man is he missing well, there, there's a den tree, a couple trees over. Wow. I have literally said, hey, watch this. You know, you got a pup that's half-heartedly treeing, and there's a gray squirrel sitting right there. And I've gone in and beat and beat and beat, and I can't even get him to twitch, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on. I want you to timber. You know, you would if we were down south. All the young ones die pretty quick. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, not many dumb that. squirrels on the land I'm hunting because they get uh, smoked. Wow. So Yeah, but, we don't have that. If I just want to go tree squirrels, even like right now, I just go across the street or out behind the house. Uh, I've got multiple farms right here that that uh, they let me let me let me go right now. Even though our season is closed, I can still go if I want to, you know. Nice. All right, guys, that was the first episode with Mr. Adam O'Donnell. 
I hope y'all enjoyed that as much as I did. It was a pleasure to talk to him, a man of such knowledge. Y'all come back for the next episode. Stay tuned. Thank y'all and have a good one. And as always, enjoy the great outdoors.